You ever see yourself from behind and wonder, who is that? How did she get that way? What's happened to her? <laughs> what happened? How did she get all those rolls? I don't know. I think it might be that cheesecake I had last week. Yeah, let's blame the cheesecake. Or maybe it was that beautiful dessert I made earlier. Did you see that video? So nice. And actually, this wasn't that fattening. Not so bad. Or maybe it's all the plantain I make. Anyway, this is not a cooking vlog. We have serious matters to tend to. So you know I love plants, right? And you probably love plants too. And we can spend a lot of money on plants. So I decided I needed to go ahead and propagate some of my plants. So this is a way to double the plants without having to buy new plants. But before I do that, I wanted you to see that I have started making changes to my breakfast room slash dining room. And uh, it looks very different right now, but I'm so excited. I'm going to share a dedicated video of all the changes I've made to this rental property. So it looks really different, but we're going to show you that in a different video. Anyway, this is what inspired this video. So Kenton got me a moss pole, which is something you use to help your plants grow and climb on. And I looked at my Monstera and I was like, it looks so flat. Like, why is it moving downward? Part of it is because it's struggling to get sun. And if I put it outside, it will grow upward. But I thought, let's try this moss pole. I've got this new moss pole. Let's see if this works, if I can tie the leaves of the monstera to this pole and you know encourage it to grow upward so i got this kit it even has like you know plant labels and uh yeah let's go ahead and open it now ideally this uh moss pole which is easy to set up it just has a spike that goes in the ground and then you can stack the poles on top Anyway, they're great for like vines or, you know, the pothos plant, but I thought it was genius to try it on this Monstera plant. So I stick it in the pot, which by the way, needs to be changed. This plant is pretty large and needs a larger pot. So anyway, I got the pole in pretty well. And then I think let's go ahead and, you know, bring the leaves close but it's about to go left real quick or south. <laughs> In case you didn't hear that snap, I'll play it again. Man, I was so upset, so upset, really was. I was like, abandon ship, abandon ship. This plan is not good for this plant. This is not going to work for this plant. This is not a pothos or a vine. So, uh-uh. So I decided to go ahead and just cut the leaf since it had already snapped. And I'm just going to use it to decorate. So I'm going to put it in some water, which I'm going to show you. <laughs> I was so sad. But anyway, I'm putting it in some water. And then I thought about it and I was like, you know, this is going to last a long time in this glass of water, but it's not going to grow. So wouldn't it be nice if I show you all the plants that you can actually grow if you put them in some water? So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you all the house plants you can propagate. You can double or triple your house plants. So that's what we're going to do. So honestly, this is a great way to double or triple your plants, like I said earlier, and save money. You're going to need some clear plastic cups or some glass jars. I'm going to use plastic cups, some toothpicks, and masking tape or sellotape, whichever. And you're also going to need a scissors, any scissors that you think is fine to cut plants. The first common household plant I'm going to propagate is the pothos plant. Most of us have this plant in our house. It's easy to grow and you can double, triple this plant very easily. So I'm just going to cut a small piece and we'll see. Okay, here's another piece of the pothos plant that I propagated a while back. And next to that is the fiddle fig plant. The fiddle fig plant is a beautiful plant. It has these giant leaves and everyone loves this plant. It grows really tall if you have it in the right environment. So I have these little baby 
fiddle fig plants underneath and I'm gonna cut one or two of those below. This is the rubber tree plant and this can also be cut and propagated and grown in water. So definitely a plant you can propagate. I'm not gonna do that in this video, but I definitely wanted to point it out. This is the ZZ plant, which has also become quite popular amongst plant collectors. And can you see the green baby leaves growing through? So yeah, I'm gonna cut a piece and we're gonna propagate this. There you go, the leaves are very dark and it grows well indoors. Of course, we can't forget succulents. Succulents can be propagated so easily. You can literally break off a leaf or pick up a leaf that's dropped and stick that in some dirt and it will grow. You can, you know, break off a piece of the stem and put it in some water and it will grow. So this is the jade plant and that's what we're going to do. The snake plant or mother-in-law's tongue is another fascinating plant because it's so low maintenance and it's one of those that is known to filter the air. So if you have it indoors, it will filter out your air and filter out toxins. And it's just fascinating. Now I have cut it, you can see it does have a little bit of a sap, so I will dry the leaf for a few days before using it. All right, so how do we propagate plants in water? Here's our collection so far, and again, I did not include the rubber plant, but you can certainly propagate rubber plants too. Okay, so we have our water as well and our other supplies. So I'm pouring some water into a cup and how much water you add to the cup will vary depending on the length or height of the plant you're using. And now I'm adding masking tape across the cup. I'm going to make kind of like a grid. So very easy to do, just put the masking tape across the cup or if you happen to have a jar of water. So the first plant I'm going to add is the pothos. I love when it has these nodes. That tells you it will grow. It will definitely grow roots in those areas. I'm just trimming the tip of the uh, stem and then I'm adding it into the cup of water. And the grid kind of helps to balance it so it doesn't fall completely into the water and just provides support. So very easy. Next, I'm making another grid or, you know, adding the masking tape across the cup for another plant. And I felt like I was in some sort of biology class or <laughs> laboratory. <laughs> and again, like I said, how much water you add will vary depending on the size of the little plant or stalk that you're using. So this is the fiddle fig plant and the stem was very short. So I wanted to raise the water up so that the stem could kind of, you know, just sit right above the water. For this one, you will see I am going to make the grid again and I'm using the um, ZZ plant. So I've just cut the tip off the ZZ plant and I'm putting it in. And here I've intentionally showed you that this is a little too much water because so much of the stem is in the water. Now I have reduced the water and you can see just the tip of the stem is in the water. This is the jade plant and again the uh, grid on top or lattice of masking tape helps to balance the plant. So this is interesting, this is for the snake leaf. Now I just used two lines or two rows of the masking tape. And technically because the leaf has a little bit of a curl to it, it actually goes in the cup and it doesn't fall in. But I was worried that, you know, in the future, once the leaf shrivels up a little or dries a little, it could fall right in. And so to prevent that, you can add toothpicks. So this leaf is very fleshy and thick so you push the toothpicks in one on either side so I leave it long on one side and then I add a second one to the opposite side and there you go you can now balance it on top of your cup of water see isn't that cute yeah really simple and believe it or not 
when it comes to the snake plant, you need to dry the leaf for about a day or two before you add it to the water like this, okay? So the others you can add immediately to the water, but for the snake plant, go ahead and dry it before you put it to the water. And this is what the collection looks like, really pretty. Like, I think it's beautiful, at least it's beautiful to me. Tell me what you think, is it not beautiful? I can't wait to show you once they all start making roots. So this is the next day and I just love how the sun shines on them, my little plant babies. In about two weeks to a month, I should definitely have roots and I'll show it to you. I just wanna show you this food. This looks really good, right? It almost looks like jollof rice with some minced meat in there and it even had sausage. This was cooked by my uh, very American husband, okay, because he thinks he's African now. But let me show you exhibit one. This is exhibit one right here. Where is it? This is what he put in here. Extra, extra hot, okay? It says incredibly delicious African sauce. The part that he failed to notice is it says serving two teaspoons. Do you know what my husband did? He poured the entire jar into this. So guess what? We cannot eat it. It is too hot. Kenton, what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> As we are all choking and trying not to have a, a, a in major indigestion. And it's hot. <laughs> it's hot. You're sweating. Hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> Kareem is trying to struggle to take it. He added like a whole bunch of ketchup. See, I came downstairs and I was like, oh, Kenton has made some food. This is going to be good. So he went to pick the kids up. I add the food. I tasted it. I was like, what? My, my mouth is burning me. My chest is burning me. Let's add some ketchup. Let's add some mayo. I still couldn't do it. And I am half African. I could not do it. Um, no, it's too much. It's too much. That's why uh, reading instructions is important. <laughs> reading is fundamental. <laughs> what does that mean, reading is fundamental? <laughs> it's fundamental to everything. Exactly. It's very important. And you're now going to force yourself to eat it. Because I have pride. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. When I recorded this, I had no idea. Here I am laughing about how hot it was. Well, let me tell you, hours later, I was literally crying in so much pain. Something was definitely wrong with that sauce. It wasn't just about the pepper. And it turns out not only I had suffered, Kareem was suffering. He had a huge stomach ache. He was throwing up. He couldn't even go to work. He went to work and had to be sent home. That's how bad it was. So we both had suffered because of that pepper sauce. Poor Kareem uh, had to come home because he didn't know what was going on too. We were both suffering silently, separately. Turns out hours before, I thought the devil was in my stomach. <laughs> Hours before, at 4.30 in the morning, I woke up. Well, not I woke up. I had not gone to sleep. And then my stomach started doing some crazy stuff. I was like, what is going on? I had to go to the restroom and was in there for what felt like an hour, almost crying. Like I wanted to lie down on the floor because I was so tired, but my stomach was killing me. That pepper sauce, I don't know. That was the disciple of the devil. That, that, that was not good. That was not good what happened to us. I don't know. You know, at first I was thinking, well, maybe it's just the quantity Kenton put in there. But now I'm thinking never again. That was so not worth it. Never again. Uh, not with that kind of pain that we suffered afterwards. Uh, Karim, poor guy. Had to clock out of work early. Poor guy. I feel so sorry for him. <laughs> but lesson two, though, is I'm very proud of him for standing up for himself. He didn't stay at work and suffer it through because Kareem's the type. He will just keep working, but he couldn't focus. You, you thought about it? Right. He said basically he started to see double vision because he wasn't feeling good at all. So he had to ask to... Um, to leave to clock out so anyway that's why he's home at this hour 
<laughs> what is Kenton doing? <laughs> In his signature shirt. Salad. You're making me a wife a salad. No, y'all let him stop. Okay, he was making a salad for himself. Okay, a giant salad. And even a salad can pack a lot of calories, okay? Especially if you put a ton of salad dressing. So I came over and I said, oh, I see you're making salad for both of us. Because clearly that salad couldn't possibly be just for you. <laughs> so anyway, what we got here, this is tofu, which he just cubed up. I mean, tofu's okay. Um, this was the giant bowl, but keep in mind, he had this and this intended for himself. Okay, so he did give me a little bit, and he still has that much. <laughs> and he's got beans. And what else are we putting in here? Oh, we also have egg. We also have an egg to go in there. But Ken, how you doing? How's the diet going? It's going. It's going. Mm. It's my first meal of the day. Mm. So I'm a little cranky. Mm. That's okay. Oh, I get an egg. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying the vlog so far and don't forget to give us a thumbs up and let's go to Home Depot because I love looking at plants. It's one of my happy places and Home Depot is where it's at when it comes to plants here in North Carolina and plants make me happy and anyway, <clears throat> look at my skin. Isn't it looking okay? It's looking good, good, right? I'm not wearing any makeup just enjoying my skin in this hot weather. <laughs> so anyway, I am now back to wearing a mask because after that whole bout with pneumonia, I was like, girl, no, we need to tighten up. There is a bug out there, many bugs out there. The vid is out there, pneumonia now, uh-uh. Ooh, the orchids are pretty. But they look a little dehydrated. What is this? Let's see. It's called Calathea. Calathea Figoro, 16. Mm -hmm. Now what are these? I don't know what this is. Hmm. It's a, oh, this is just a bromeliad. Oh, it's a different type of bromeliad. Interesting. And then there's this bromeliad. One more. Oh, I don't know why it looks all beat up. It's the uh, only one see. left uh, hiding. It's dry. It's, it's, yeah. It's, dry. <laughs> it's 30 bucks. Oh my yeah. God. It's a lot. Let's see. Yeah, and it's, they're not taking care of it. Hmm. It almost looks like a crazy haircut. Oh, it's quite sturdy, the leaves. Quite kind of almost crispy. And I think these are called Maranthas. I'm, I'm not sure. No, it says Medallion Calithia. I like the leaves too. Some more indoor plants. Are these real? No. Oh, these are all fake. Interesting. They've never had fake plants in here before. Yeah, they definitely had a lot of fake plants, you know. I have not seen this selection of fake plants at Home Depot before, but interesting. They kind of look fake to me when you come up close, but for people who don't like plants or don't have light or just can't take care of plants, I guess this is a great option. They even have like birds of paradise, which is something we used to grow when we lived in a previous house. Anyway, they also have a ton of succulents, which are easy to grow and beautiful. We were standing on line. The line was super long. Long line. Uh -huh. Yeah. Indoors, I have one. Uh-huh. It's still almost the same size. Right. It doesn't have the kind of environment for it to grow that way. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like the one out there, it's growing like this kind of stuff coming out. Right. I didn't like when it got like this. Like exactly. That. This like is what happened. It just shoot it up, which is kind of good that it's growing, but it doesn't look as pretty right. as well, when it's can flat. You, can you then crop? 
trying to see if they That's put right, the name. With the, um, uh, Asian lily. Finally, Kenton got to extract me from Home Depot, <laughs> driving past Wegmans, which is my favorite grocery store lately, and it started to rain really heavy. We've been having a lot of rain here in North Carolina recently. Ooh, nice to be home. I love this hedge outside of our dining room. It's so pretty, beaten down by the rain. Anyway, before we got home, we did stop at a thrift store. <laughs> the Durham Rescue Mission has several branches, and I picked up this little glass top, bell top, you know? What does it remind you of? What do you think this is? What do you think? I will show you why I bought it. Ta-da! <laughs> what else did you think it was? Let's stack up these macaroons and this is going to be the perfect cake cover or dessert cover. <laughs> so cute, isn't it? It is so adorable. Oh, I'm in love. And they didn't even charge me for this. All those things that I will show you or the three things I picked up were actually like $5. So I just, I can't help myself. It's so adorable and it just makes me smile. So why not? Okay, then I picked up this crystal mini pitcher. It's, I guess, for milk, really. Um, but I've been making a lot of, like, drinks, kind of cafe-style drinks, and I thought this would be perfect. It's so beautiful. It's quite heavy, but very pretty, and it just sparkles. Then I found this little can, this tin can, heart-shaped tin can, and this is something about it reminds me of a grandmother or something vintage and interesting. I don't know. Look what's inside. What do you think? Isn't that pretty? Very pretty. It's a plate. A little dessert or chocolate plate, perhaps? I don't know. I'm turning into my grandmother. <laughs> Definitely turning into my grandmother or grand-aunts. We liked knickknacks, pretty things, girly things. So that's all folks. I hope you enjoy the vlog and like I said, it's been raining a lot here in North Carolina or at least in the Triangle area. And I was going to show you my hair because I took out my braids and I have a giant afro. Um, but I'll probably do that in the next vlog. So I hope you have an enjoyable and healthy week ahead. Bye!